the best thing you can do is teach people to write because there's no difference between that and thinking and one of the things that just blows me away about universities is that no one ever tells students why they should write something it's like well you have to do this assignment well why are you writing well you need the grade it's like no you need to learn to think because thinking makes you act effectively in the world. Thinking makes you win the battles you undertake. And those could be battles for good things. If you can think and speak and write, you are absolutely deadly. Nothing can get in your way. So that's why you learn to write. It's like, and I can't believe that people aren't just told that. It's, it's, it's like, it's the most powerful weapon you can possibly provide someone with. And I, I mean, I know lots of people who've been staggeringly successful and watched them throughout my life. I mean, those people, you don't want to have an argument with them. They'll just slash you into pieces. And not in a malevolent way. It's like, if you're going to make your point and they're going to make their point, you better have your points organized because otherwise you're going to look like and be an absolute idiot. You are not going to get anywhere. And if you can formulate your arguments coherently, and make a presentation, if you can speak to people, if you can lay out a proposal, God, people give you money, they give you opportunities, you have influence, that's what you're at university for. And so that's what you do, is you, that's, you're, in, you're in English, right? You're, and yeah, in languages anyways, it's like, yeah, te teach people to be articulate, because that's the most dangerous thing you can possibly be. So, and that's motivating if people know that, it's like, well, why are you, learning to write, because you're, here's your sword, here's your M16, right? Here's your bulletproof vest. Like, you learn how to use them. But, ah, it's just, it's an endless mystery to me why that isn't made self-evident. So, that's the sort of thing that can drive you mad trying to sort out. It's like people are, there's a, there's a conspiracy to bring people into the education system to make them weaker. So, I guess that keeps the competition down. Maybe that's one way of thinking about it. If your students are stupid, they're not going to challenge you. Get off of Instagram and Snap. And get off all these blogs. And get into something that can really, really move your life forward. It's really not important what the majority of people that are blogging are saying. As a matter of fact, bloggers are not relevant people, they're not shakers and movers, and they're not decision makers, and they're not power brokers. So when you spend so much time in the blog world, the Instagram world, the chat world, all of this, you're wasting valuable time. If I was young and I had what you have, and you're the brightest group of young people that have come along in a long time, man. Millennials are absolutely brilliant because you all have technology. I had no technology growing up, nothing. You, you couldn't download a book. You had to go to the library, go to the card catalog, pull it open, find the book, find the number, go get on the elevator, go to the row, find the number book, get the book, and hope somebody ain't told a page out that you want to read. That's what it used to be. When my mom and them finally got the money together to help us educate ourselves, they bought an encyclopedia set, Britannica, Funk and Wagner, and everything you wanted to know was in that encyclopedia, and that's all you could know. If you want to look up something about elephant, and they had two pages on elephants, that was what your knew about an elephant. Y'all got Google. You can Google anything. You all have stuff at your fingertips that can make you great. But if you can combine your technology with your parents and your grandparents' work ethic, your could be rich. You could be rich, man. But you cannot erase the work ethic part. There is no getting around. Ain't no elevator to the top. You got to take the stairs. The elevator don't go to the top, man. Not in the world of success. You got to take the stairs. Y'all got to start getting gritty, man. I hate it when I see young people wasting their time, wasting all this technology got. Just bull****. 
just sitting around in this world that's been created for you, that everything is instant. I was arguing with my son the other day. We're having a debate. I thought, man, I'm finally sitting with one of my sons having a healthy debate. I told him that from Cleveland to Nashville was about 540 miles, something like that. He Googles it while we're talking. He said, no, Dad, you're wrong. It's 526 miles. F you. I said 540. It's amazing, man how you rely on technology, and it's a help to you. But young people, you got to get gritty, man. You got to develop some dog in you. You got to understand that success, you can't Google success. Go Google it. You can't Google it, man. I got something else for you. Because I've lived so long, and I've been exposed to so many things. I've seen stuff hopefully you'll never see. And I've seen some things I hope one day you do see. But go Google exposure. It ain't gonna take you nowhere. I've been around the world, man, because I've traveled it. But I traveled it because I've, I've made myself uncomfortable. I have a life of convenience now. But in order to get the life of convenience, you gotta have a very uncomfortable life. You got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Stop trying to do everything the short way. Stop trying to figure out the easy way because the ain't gonna happen. I got news for you, man. It's not happening, young people. You got to get, you got to get messed up sometimes. You got to get dirty. You got to get your feelings hurt. You got to get disappointed. You got to get told no. You gonna ask somebody for some money. He gonna tell you no. But at least then, when I see somebody trying and I tell them no, I try to at least give them something else. See, I'm not gonna hand you a fish sandwich. I'll teach you how to fish. But I'm not giving your a fish sandwich. You can forget that. You are sitting on an empire. You are worth millions. That's how you become a millionaire. You don't try to think of a million. You just do for this $10 thing you got over and over and over. You're sitting on money, man. That's how you get rich. Quit trying to figure out how to make a million. Take something, a $10 idea, and just do it, and do it, and keep praying about it. Keep asking God to show you the next level. Keep asking God for strength when it looked like you ain't gonna make it. When I was homeless, it looked like I wasn't gonna make it. I kept praying about it. Kept asking God to come get me. I kept leaning on my mama. Man, she said, he didn't bring you this far to leave you. I kept hearing her say that. You know I could have gave up a long time ago, but I, did, I never gave up. I just kept fighting. God is gonna come through and do what he said he gonna do, but you got to give him something to work with. If you do that, God will change your whole life. If you, I dare you to try it. I dare you to take your gift and do it over and over and over. Watch what he do.